Hello and welcome to this really special cryptocurrency technical analysis that I have for you because I'm going to be answering the highly requested question of is the bottom now in for Bitcoin? To answer this question, I'm going to be going over the higher term time frame harmonic that we have been trading over the past few months, giving us that short at around $47,000, taking it down to current prices. And I'll be answering, you know, this low that we've put in at around $25,000, is this actually a really significant significant pivot in the chart which will support price to push it back up to higher prices potentially an overall low of the bigger higher term time frame range that we have going on in this so of course i am going to ask of you only one thing in today's video and that is that you pay absolute full attention to everything that i say i'm going to put a lot of effort into this video i'm going to be giving you a lot of insights and little golden nuggets along the way so you just need to block out all distractions around you give me your full attention for the whole length of the video and also write some notes along as we go because you are definitely going to be learning from this video. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be a little bit of a longer one than normal. I'm also going to include a clip from the public uh, live stream that I attended with BitBoy. Uh, why am I going to attach this clip to this video? Well, because it actually talked in depth about the harmonic at the time before it had completed, you know, what we were looking at, talking about a little bit of the fundamentals underlying, you know, how I'm, how I'm approaching the fundamentals of Bitcoin. And, um, you know, this is just an interesting clip. So I'm going to attach that clip now. That's about 15 minutes. And then I will come back at the end of that clip and we will review what's happening now, how that harmonic progressed and what we are going to be looking at next, you know, really into the next few months here on the Bitcoin chart. So I'll, get, I'll pass you over to that clip. I'll start that now and I'll catch you at the end of that clip. Thank you and enjoy the clip from the BitBoy live stream. Myself personally, I think we are at resistance. Um, I will explain this briefly. I know we're a bit struck on time, but I'll briefly explain like the resistance that we're at and how we can approach the market in terms of, you know, you never want to class yourself as a bull. You never want to class yourself as a bear. You want to class yourself as a neutral that's able to make money when price is going down and when price is going up. And that, you know, if you approach the mindset that you have, you have that mindset in trading, you really open yourself up to the possibilities. Um, and actually, when we came down, <laughs> it seems like a long time ago, but it was only last week down to thirty five thousand dollars. I'll show you the current trade that I'm talking about here. This is the trade that I was ready and waiting for, which was a harmonic, um, which is based off of like Fibonacci. We had some Fibonacci time in here. Fibonacci retracements as well as extensions. And I was basically ready and waiting for this long of around $35,000, about, about one week before it happened. Um, so we we were basically planned out for this level. And you can see our targets coming in at around $46,000. So from the original idea, this was given on a live stream that I done. From the original idea was long around $35,000, take it up to around $46,000. And obviously we can see today that we've hit in around $45,000 and we're starting to get a pullback. And I will show you here, um, you know, things that we're looking at in terms of the way that we're trading and doing analysis, it's, it, I'm not going to lie, it's fairly complex, um, but it, it, it's really, really, really helpful. So the first thing that we'd be doing is marking out these last series of highs. So over the long, long term, I'm sure you got Bitcoin holdings you wanted to go up, but over a couple month yeah. period, it probably doesn't mean too much to you. So we're in a place right now where people are trying to figure out where this market is going. And so from the technical side, you're showing that it seems like correction. We don't know how far down it's going to go, but could go back to the to the previous lows. Where do you lie on the idea that uh, the technicals and the fundamentals are just totally separate? Like, do you believe that the stuff going on right now in Russia and Ukraine is affecting the Bitcoin price? Or do you think this was going to happen anyways? Well, that, that, that's a really, really brilliant question, to be honest. And I'm not ever going to deny that the fundamentals of Bitcoin, like I am a long term believer in Bitcoin. I, 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 I do believe in Bitcoin. I hold support Bitcoin. Um, but for me, it's, it's not that I just believe in this asset and I want to buy it every single day and only buy never, you know, never shorting. But for me, it's like I want to I want to make money when price is going down. Why? Because then I can make even more Bitcoin. Yeah. And so. Is there a correlation between the fundamentals and, and what hey, happening? Daniel, the... Hey, Daniel, Igor, we, we had both <laughs> of our things. We had our things back in the day, but it's fine. I'm sure he's a nice guy. So, uh, guy. yeah, must, must be good. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'll meet him one day. 
So yeah, so go ahead and continue. You were saying that um, you know there's possibly some connection between uh, the fundamentals and uh, you know the, the technicals right now. If you want to, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So you were going in my, so well. In my opinion, it's more like the, the fundamentals are speeding up almost the the, the, the moves because I mean. This is the, I have this argument so much with people. They'll come on and say, hey, technical analysis doesn't work. Um, you know, it's all driven by the fundamentals. What you're doing is a gamble. And my, my answer is always going to be the same. Like people will say, for example, hey, this rise is because of, uh, you know, if, this, if, if Bitcoin had dropped this week, people would have said, oh, the fundamentals were bearish. There's a war. Guess what? Bitcoin rose this week. And now they're yeah. saying, oh, Bitcoin is bullish because it's there's fair. a war and people are hedging into it. So whatever happened, the fundamentals were backed up a bit. In my opinion, this is truly from the technicals. Why can I say this? I can say this because proving in front of your eyes, like we were recognizing that this was going to drop to this level, it was going to hit that level, and it was going to bounce. And that is literally exactly what happens. People are going to say, hey, this was because of the fundamentals. I'm going to say, no, it was, was not because of the fundamentals. Otherwise, how are we able? To, we, ha we shorted $69,000. How can anyone time sixty nine thousand dollars from fundamentals? It's not did like you, the did you think that was the that was the top at the time, or were you taking that trade more in a short in a short term? Uh, for me, it was like a medium term time frame trade. I obviously let's say I didn't think it was going to hit sixty nine thousand and necessarily go all the way down to thirty four thousand. But mm -hmm. I had a very good feeling that we were at least going to see like a 15 20 percent pullback and the, the 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 beauty of trading is when you start to get that, those pullbacks you start to change that you know large term market structure see from there it's just a case of holding on to that short position and until you reclaim market structure until you get those signs of strengths there's no need to close the short so i, I personally still hold that short position oh, wow. because you're taking profit a, on it's it it's a really big hedge you're taking some profits on so, it or no? Uh, no, for, for me, I haven't taken profits on that because it's more of a hedge. I'm, I'm sure you like, understand this as well. Like when you have mm -hmm. so much spot Bitcoin, 100%. you also mm -hmm. want to protect yourself. So yeah. that, that's mainly a hedge position. But I'm just more not really trying to, I'm just trying to emphasize that, you know, fundamentals couldn't accord 69K, but we, we traded $69,000 from a technical perspective. So, and then, and, you know, for, that's on a high term time frame, And then from the lower term time frames, you know, being able to, Know, recognize where price is going to be drawn towards, where it's going to bounce, and then to see that actually like happen, um, you know, it's it's I think it's hard to deny when someone's showing you right in front of your eyes like it worked yeah. that people can then say, oh no, it was from the fundamentals. It's like if we do, let's say we pull back here, you know, what's the fundamental reason of pulling back here? I mean, the only reason is that we come up, we took that high, and 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 you got a you got a pullback from a swing failure pattern. It's it's a common it's a common trade. But wouldn't um, it, wouldn't, you know, just, it, wouldn't it uh, just to just to continue on that thought there though, like let me just tell you what my opinion you know is is that yeah. when it comes when it comes to this move uh, that we've seen, I I understand what you're saying. Like I, it's hard to like volume now. Whales taking advantage of what's going on to move the price in that direction where the technicals are going. I, I get that, but. When it comes to looking at the price points for the support and the resistance, like I, I don't think that there was really like a good case, in my opinion, for it to go back and retest 46K if we were still on the way down further. It got clearly rejected at 46K before. So it's like, yep. how much of the story are the technicals telling us? Like they're telling us generally, okay, the price should be going up. We get this news, the price, you know, goes up. But in terms of like, exactly hitting those price points and and you know where we're at today where we're basically we re retested 45 at least um w was that like were you showing that or you just mean like in general the technicals are showing you specifically like hey it's time for like a small resurgence here or it looks like it's time it's over overbought it needs to go down a little bit or are you saying that you think the technicals drive even like the uh you know exact price point where it ends up at Honestly, yeah. Honestly, yes. Uh, and and for, I'll, I'll explain this uh, in a bit more detail if I like to show this a second. Sure. So this is the harmonic that we were trading. So really simply, harmonic A, uh, X to A, we bring it back up to B, bring it back down to C here. And then obviously we're looking for the target D above above B if, if we can clear this last high once more. Really simply, you see X to A, we have this um, 
we have this pocket known as the CC, which is our Fibonacci retracement that probably many, many people have heard about right now. And then we just use this, put this on our CC, and that comes up into the CC. We bring this down. This was a heavy retracement, and this came basically down to the 886 Fibonacci high to low. We come down into the 886 here. So in terms of, um, you know, why, why, if Bitcoin is in a bearish market, let's say Bitcoin is in a really strong downtrend, there's a lot of negative news. Um, why, why is Bitcoin bounced like it has here? And I would say there's two reasons for this. Firstly, the hum the harmonic. Okay, so this harmonic was for me a very, very important um, important tool in terms of a technical perspective. You can see here we even envisioned envisioned one more drop to the downside. Based off of Fibonacci time, a harmonic needs to be symmetrical. And so this X to A was too quick to have put the low in on the Monday, Tuesday. We knew we were looking towards the end of the week. Thus, it was very unlikely that that was the low. We see we then put in the low on a quick move to the downside. And so why is there going to be a bounce? Let's say if, if the, fundam the fundamentals are bullish or bearish. For me, I, I don't really look or care, to be honest, of the fundamentals on, on these timeframes. The only thing I'm thinking to myself is, why are we going to buy here if we are overall bearish, let's say? Because I, I'm pretty bearish, to be honest, on the medium term timeframes. So why would I be buying if I think overall Bitcoin can go lower? And it's a simple fact of, a, we have a really valid technical trade here. The whole world is bearish. And this is something that's really important for me. The whole world is bearish at that moment in time. When you put in that low on the 24th of February, it was just as you create, you know, just as everything's going mental right. in the world. The whole world's ultra bearish. So what is the best way to make money as a large trader? You basically buy all that fear. Your average retail trader is extremely fearful. They're selling, you know, you know, they're, they're scared. And it's the famous quote of you've got to buy and you've got to be right. really taking advantage of that fear. So why was this quick? Why was this move so quick to the upside? Really simply, it's a short squeeze. The shorts that were scared down here selling, they got absolutely wrecked. You know, you never want to be shorting down here at support. The time to short is the CC mm -hmm. at B. Just as the times to short are up here. If you're buying up here, I would question, I would say you personally had no idea in terms of trading. Like, this is a bad time to long. Why? Because the time to long is at support. You're now breaching, you know, you're now coming up to resistance. This but yeah, that's what most people do. Short. You know, that's why, that's why most people, yeah. you know, they do it the opposite <laughs> most way, people, right? Most they, people sell it yeah. to support and, and buy the resistance. Buy, buy in the green, sell in the red, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly as predicted. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, yeah, for me, it's a case of short squeezing, uh, playing on the emotions of the market, follow the rules that, you know, the majority of people lose. So when you can not only I guess understand the fundamentals to a certain degree. But when you understand the how this market works in terms of drawing liquidity every single time, understanding that it is designed, in my opinion, this market is designed to wreck the majority of people. We see that time and time and time again. When you start to understand this, and you can read not only the technicals and trade the technicals, but also trade the psychology of the market, I think that's that's like the that's a really big turning point. If you can yeah. remove yourself from those emotions and recognize, hey. I've got a technical trade here, for example, at a long. We knew where we were longing. We knew why we were longing. We knew where our stop loss was at the time. We're going to take that trade every day of the week. Okay, we could have took this long and we got stopped out. Hey, it's part of trading. We're not going to win every trade. Yeah. We want to keep our losses smaller, our winners big. Hey, we would have. We were risking five percent. We, we're walking away of at least fifteen percent profit on the long. So, you know, there's no hundred percent guarantees, but we're playing the probabilities. We're reading the market. We're understanding really good levels to long, really good levels to short. We're taking the trades. Hey, and we're making money, and that's that's the important thing. Um, so, on the uh, way up, on real the way quick, Daniel, we're, we're running short here on time. So, I hope that you really enjoyed watching back and refreshing your memory at that BitBoy live stream that I done over on his channel. Well, you know, we, we were discussing things about the fundamentals versus the technical analysis, and truly how the technicals, or could we say the, we could say the whales in this market, e.g., CC pool, running the absolute market, and how it is so much more obvious that the technicals truly are the actual fundamental reason why the market is bottoming where it bottoms 
why the market tops out where it tops. And how can I say that with absolute certainty? It's because of the way that we're able to predict the lows and the highs way, you know, we're talking months in advance. The technicals couldn't have done that. You know, we were hinting at things such as, you know, people were blaming the rise on the Russia war, but if the if Bitcoin had dropped at this point, it would have been because of the Russia war. Um, in the end, Bitcoin rose and it was because of the Russia war. You can just see how people following the fundamentals, there's always a fundamental reason for a drop or a rise. At the end of the day, the only way that you can time the bottoms and the tops with such precision is by technical analysis. And if you're trading hundreds of millions like I am, it also, of course, does have a bit of a help. But nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, this harmonic was absolute perfection. And I do want to, you know, now go over the harmonic in a bit more depth, give you some insights into, you know, how I personally traded this, how I was calm and collecting collected during the whole process and how, you know, what it brings us up to now. So when we zoom out, of course, we're now trading back down at around $30,000 once more. And I'll be going over my answer of, you know, is this the bottom for Bitcoin? Okay, so pay attention. And yeah, let's start off by reviewing this harmonic. I want to start off by reviewing this harmonic before we go on to what's happening right now. There's, there's just a lot you can actually t take away from the education I'm about to give you. And I want to start off with, you know, how we first identified that harmonic back in February, by the way, back in February was when I was first identifying that harmonic. If you remember correctly, we also shorted the top of B. What was the top of B? That was it up into our CC, by the way, absolute perfection, with even the swing failure pattern onto the top of the CC. But from, from that, we obviously recognized very early on, yeah, we have a really nice harmonic going on here. When we combine that with the Elliott wave count, this was from a live stream going into where we were looking at the wave three low. I was expecting a bounce for wave four before one more final push to the downside to give us wave five, which obviously in the end absolutely did happen. Never taking out the low of A, giving us our really easy invalidation on the long position, bringing it up to around forty six to $48,000 being our NPOCs here. Things that you want to take away from this was I was looking at the higher term time frame levels with our volume, okay, on top of your NPOCs, on top of the Elliott wave count. Okay, with our volume put, put in to, on top of this. So you can see I'm using a mixture of tools to come together to find the highest probability outcome. I'm not looking at the news. I'm not following anybody else's ideas. I am doing my own analysis and you know, I was focused and ready on what I wanted to see. Okay, I know at the time as well, Eagle was looking at the exact same long for himself. He was obviously looking for a long off of around $35,000 to take that up to $58,000. Okay, so we both were under the idea that Bitcoin is going to rise from here. We both didn't care about the Russia war. Obviously, Bit um, Eagle had a bit of a higher target than me. My target was always this $48,000. But what we both agreed on was when that actually played out, we got our long entries, and when it finally hit the target, after seeing the failed auction of the high, I know, I think 58,000 just became unrealistic. Why? Because after seeing a failed auction of the high at D, okay, what happened next? Well, let me show you. Well, obviously, this is known as a failed auction. By the way, we come up, we trade above the high of B, we then lose that. So then what's happening here? We're losing market structure. Market structure is obviously very, very, very important after seeing that failed auction. And then you get a really perfect retest of the CC. So you can see Fibonacci from high to low. You are then, after this point, okay, what you have to think is once you have seen that high put in at D, you know, once again, just want to emphasize correctly called months in advance. Okay, once you've actually seen then that high put in at D, you get the failed auction above the high of B, you then get a market structure change, and then you get this retest of the CC, which lasts several days. Several days, you can see test of the CC, wicks, rejection, 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 rejections, before finally the bulls obviously, sorry, the bulls give up, the bears take over, which I was obviously very happy about, and we finally see that push to the downside. And I want to just make this very, very, very clear that, of course, this whole long setup into the short was given inside of a members only live stream that I done. You know, this was way in advance given to the members. And then if, you know, even, even for the public, I mentioned the whole harmonic over on live stream on, uh, on BitBoy's public live stream. So there was a lot of, you know, nobody can deny I did not call that. Okay, but then also within the group, I put this post at the end of, this was the end of March. Okay, and for me, I was emphasizing once more, you know, I'm sticking to my plan. Okay, I'm going to short and chill. The only way I'm going to get out of this is on a reclaim of $47,000. It's the only way I'm going to close this short because I am going to be basically waiting for lower and made it very obvious I am shorting off of this harmonic 
Let's go down for Coles liquidation price, 36K. That obviously happened. But, you know, to be serious, you know, short and chill. Why? Because we've hit our harmonic target period. We've hit our harmonic target. Unless we reclaim 47k, I'm going to stay in that short. And guess what? Over the following days, I again posted that in the group. Seriously, I'm shorting this. I'm going for the harmonic. I'm waiting for much lower now, 31st of March. You can see you had several days to get into that short. Price did not finally fall until the 5th of April. And if you look here at $47,000, you got the perfect retest of 47k. So pretty much everybody could have taken that short along with me here. You see here, test of 47, test of 47, test to 47 full on rejections at the exact level that I'm telling you is where there is a lot of confluence of resistance, never able to break that. And guess what? We did go absolutely much lower in the Bitcoin chart. Okay, we can see obviously making its way down, oops, excuse me, making its way down to $25,000. Okay, during this section of the chart, obviously, I was personally on holiday for a few months, uh, you know, <laughs> making very much use of the profits I was making off of this trade. Of course, also shorted $69,000, also shorted $52,000. Hey, <laughs> lots of Bitcoin have been made over the past few months. What can I say? I went and absolutely enjoyed myself during this downtrend. Okay, expecting lower prices happy to just remain short and chill for those lower prices. And then it's obviously happened right now. Okay, we've hit $25,000. It was obviously our weekly naked point of control, as well as actually being a potentially a bottom of this range, where this could be our high of the range, this could be the low of the range, and the price absolutely just remains fully full on range bound. So what you might be thinking next is, okay, congratulations, Daniel, you long the low of C, you short at the top of D, and it's brought us down to, you know, a really, really, really big target, okay? Uh, Victor actually gave this one for free in a public video as well. If you take the length of A, okay, so you're using your Fibonacci extension, go from X, okay, so you go from X to A, bring that top of, to the top of D, and that gives us your one-to-one -one of X to A equal, you know, equals this target of D, that which you can use. We can see that target has been hit off the harmonic, by the way. So this is obviously a pretty, pretty large target after you break your internal structure, the harmonic, which obviously brings you down to around this key level of $28,000. So what I want to do is zoom in now. I want to zoom in and look at this, you know, you know, we've actually got a range with inside of a range right now. Really simply, you can see this also range that we have going on between this low, okay, this low and, and this high. So what we can see here is we actually have a range within side of the range, okay? And then if you go down onto a lower term time frame, this is one that I traded this morning, you actually have another range, which I will show you now. You actually have this range, if it will let me click, we have this range here. So you can see we are absolutely range bound here on a five minute time frame. Deviation, short position, back down to the low. Deviation, long position, back up to the middle of the channel. You know, this is really, really basic stuff if you're a chart champion. This is, yeah, this is our bread and butter. This is what we absolutely love to trade. While a lot of people find this choppy, difficult to trade, Nah, this for me is, is, is the easiest range. This is the quite, quite, um, quite simple. It's just basically a range. But we obviously have a five minute range within a 30 minute range <laughs> within, a, within a monthly time frame range. So at the moment, Bitcoin is totally range bound. Okay, I will remove those channels that I've just put on there temporarily. And within that smaller term time frame range, within the medium term time frame range, within the out, you know, within the, you know, a four hour time frame within the monthly range. Sorry if I'm going into a bit of a range section right now. We obviously have a few key levels here. Resistance coming in at around that $32,000 zone. Local support coming in at around 28, maybe between 27,500, so you know, that 28,500, about $1,000. We basically have our support of our local and our resistance locally. So I'll always approach the question the, the same way of, you know, a lot of people are going to asking, you know, a lot of people are asking me, Daniel, is the bottom in for Bitcoin? You know, t get, give me an answer. A lot of people just want me to say, yes, the bottom's in for Bitcoin, because why? A lot of people in this market are full on believers of Bitcoin. They do not like to short Bitcoin. When I was shorting Bitcoin, yeah, when I was shorting Bitcoin at $47,000, especially on a BitBoy video where everybody's basically just ultra balls. Do you know how many people were commenting? Hey, this guy has no idea what he's doing. Bitcoin's not going to drop from here. Bitcoin is extremely bullish. Bitcoin is breaking out. You know, a lot of people thought you know a lot of people thought I was mad by shorting Bitcoin, but guess what? We dropped to twenty five thousand uh, dollars. Anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> what we have going on here now is you know is the bottom in for Bitcoin? Well, my approach to this is first of all, 
you will see a lot of the times, you know, just think back to, you know, think back to the last six months of price action. Called $69,000 high, called in advance $52,000 high, called in advance $47,000 high. I'm very good at calling highs on Bitcoin. Why? Because I am shorting with hundreds of millions, yeah? I, 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 period, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good at calling highs and I'm also trading with a lot of volume. But when it comes to trading lows, I mean, yes, I can call lows, but I'm not so actively trading it in that regards. I'm waiting for things such as sign of strength. Whereas on shorts, I'm really, really, really aggressive. I can have an influence on the market. When it comes to long, I'm more passive, okay? I'm more waiting for those sign of strengths. You know, I don't wanna be calling an absolute bottom at this point, moment in time. Why? Because I can wait to see what the market, you know, what the market wants to say. And if you are a professional trader, you are in this for the long term. You are also like me, maybe at the moment, sat in really profitable short positions, which continue to pay funding every single day. You are more than happy to remain in those shorts right now, in my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion, and you are here for my opinion in this video. So, you know, to answer the question, is the bottom in for Bitcoin? We could say there's a probability, yes, of course, the bottom could be in for Bitcoin right now. What do we want to see to really confirm that and have the probabilities increase? Well, we need to see at the very least a reclaim of our key resistance here. Then we'd be moving on to that $36,000 resistance, which is absolutely really massive. You know, if we can start to claim that, start to claim them $40,000, you know, if we start to trade above 40 k you know, the probabilities of the bottom being in here are, of course, extremely high. You know, the probabilities are increasing for every single resistance that we reclaim. Okay, but, 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 but to say the bottom is in here, when all we have done is put in a low and then a subsequent range with no follow through as of yet, you know, we have to say that there's still a high probability that price can absolutely head lower here. And I know a lot of people, especially newer traders, they really don't like this. Hey, this guy says price can go up. This guy says price can go down. Yeah, a lot of people don't like that uncertainty. But guess what? Uncertainty in the market is just a given. You have to trade the probabilities. You have to trade what you feel is the highest probability period. <coughs> Excuse me. But guess what? I'm pretty good at, at recognizing what is the highest probability when it comes to like a re, you know, how and how am I getting those probabilities? It's again, using all of these confluences of technical analysis. That is the, you know, the key takeaway here, confluence. We are coming together, we're seeing several things come together at the same time to give us high probability trades. Yeah, we knew that was a high probability resistance. We go on and we test that for five days straight, unable to break it, massive move to the downside. So it, the, the, say, the same thing that I, I say here, we wanna see really high confluences. I'm not scared to long down here. Yeah, I'm not scared to long down here. I actually have been longing down here. Yeah, I'm not scared to do that. But what I know to, to actually think to myself, hey, this long has a really high potential of much higher prices. I just wanna see a simple sign of strength. It's like the whole downtrend, this whole downtrend. I was so confident saying in those short positions because I knew, hey, I'm going to wait till there's a sign of strength on the Bitcoin chart before I even think about closing those shorts. Guess what? There were no, there was zero sign of strength during the whole move to the downside. So I was very comfortable saying, staying in short positions. The same here. Until we can at least reclaim our key resistance, our first key resistance, why would I want to close short positions and be under a risk of continuation to the downside and then just losing loads of money. Myself personally, I would prefer to maintain my same amount of money, you know, at least with a hedge rather than, you know, just lose extreme amounts of money. That for me is not how I trade. Again, I am I am in this for the long term. I'm not after, you know, an, a, you know I'm just not, I'm not in this for the short term. I'm in, I'm in this for the long term. I've already been trading more than 10 years, yeah? I have a lot of experience in this market and, you know, for me, I've done this so many times. I've traded bear markets, I've traded bull markets across not just cryptocurrency, but every single market, you know. And for, for me to, to, to want to call a low right now, I'm not just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna say this is the absolute low for Bitcoin. I'm not gonna do that. It, could it be the low for Bitcoin? Absolutely, it could. Give me a sign of strength and I'll start to come to, you know, and acknowledge, yeah, this, this really could be actually the bottom for Bitcoin. But until we've seen that sign of strength, I'm gonna remain in shorts, I'm gonna remain hedged, and I'm gonna remain calm and collected. Does it mean I'm scared to long? No. I have been longing in this range, okay? But it does mean, you know, I'm just playing it cautious until I see a sign of strength. And over the long term, that has treated me very, very well. What can we say? Okay, so a few takeaways then that I want you to remember from this video. People that are gonna say fundamentals rule the market, I think all you need to do is, sh is show them this. Calling lows, calling highs, calling lows, you know, 
I just think you need to show them that. <laughs> um, you know, if you want to learn everything that we're going over here, because of course, you know, if you want to trade up my level, you are going to need to understand the theories that we teach. And if that is of interest to you, you can of course come across to chartchampions.com where you have not only me, but of course every single day you have live streams, okay? So you have live streams every single day from the coaches, not just myself in here, we have a whole team of professionals alongside me to assist you daily, answering all your questions, helping you learn all the techniques that we trade with, okay, as well as having a really nice friendly community alongside you to assist you. So if that's of interest, head over to chartchampions.com, okay, and I suppose I'll end with my final thoughts here of... Um, yeah, I suppose if you want me to go, you know, more in depth, if you want me to go over some more local term time frame, smash that like button. If this video hits 3000 likes, I will do a special live stream where I will definitely take as many questions and answers from you, the public, uh, as possible. And we'll do a public live stream there for 3000 likes. So smash that like button if you've enjoyed. I truly hope you've learned something from this video. Uh, I personally feel that there's a lot to have taken away, how I'm approaching the market, how we're looking at the market, how we're recognizing highs and lows you know waiting for things such as sign of strengths you know even if you miss the absolute high getting in on retest these are really high probability trades when you understand the confluences that we have there and eg we are not saying with a 100 certainty what price is going to do what we are doing is looking at high probabilities and then taking those trades based off of those high probabilities okay and that is a professional trader that is the definition of a professional trader trading trading probabilities okay <laughs> and obviously well um so yeah hope you've enjoyed this video hit that like button share this video with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it too and i'm just going to say thank you for, you know thank you thank you thank you thank you hope you've enjoyed if you have i'll see you over in the members uh discord area so cheers everybody thank you have a brilliant 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 day and i'll catch you in the next one goodbye cheers